Hey guys, it's Chase with C.S. Joseph. Life. Do another episode for season 22. This is episode 9, Cognitive Transitions of ISTJs. And it's taken a long time for uh, me to even release this episode, much less actually uh, perform it. Uh, one of the reasons why for that is because I moved. Um, my doctor informed me that given that I have a, a pre-existing condition that uh, it would probably be wise for me to make myself scarce, and I did. Uh, so I have moved to a new location, a very rural location where there's very few people and very few anything whatsoever uh, in order to further isolate myself as much as possible. Uh, the condition that I have is the same exact condition that uh, caused me or inspired me to start this YouTube channel. I was I became afraid of not having a legacy, at least a legacy for my uh, for my son to take on. Most people are like, okay, well, why are you being biased against your daughter? The reason why my son's an INFJ, and he would benefit far more from knowing this um, uh, and being able to teach it to other people than my ENFP daughter. Uh, however. I'm sure she could definitely find some, you know, value out of it, and I definitely hope she does. Um, but let's be honest, Templar types are just more suited uh, for this uh, science uh, than than other types. Um, and philosopher types, like my daughter, like to be taught by Templar types this kind of content. Uh, be that as it may, I did move, and uh, because I have moved and I'm in my state of basically exile or isolation, given the situation. Uh, all I can do now is produce content, um, and the entire moving process took like literally forever. Um, and I would have had this out a lot sooner today, as promised. But you know, I had uh, people arrive today to uh, drop off some appliances because I had to get a washer and dryer. I never owned my own washer and dryer before, so it's kind of like a big step for me. But definitely something that I had to do. Um, be that as it may, I really miss the community. I miss the channel. I miss everyone. And I have been able to be there for the patrons, but I would like to be here for the rest of the community at large. Uh, so thank you for the opportunity for uh, continuing to speak in your lives, as well as produce really good content. Uh, in the future, we are going to be adjusting the kind of content that we uh, provide. I know that I have a lot of long form lectures. Uh, I've been receiving some training and going to be experimenting with other kinds of lectures in the near future. My recent uh, live stream uh, with Jay regarding uh, the royal family was one of those experiments. We're just going to be doing some experiments a little bit more to kind of see or fine tune the types of content that we're going to be releasing. That being said, long form lectures are probably going to not be as common after the completion of season 18, 19, and 22. Be advised, we only have one more episode left for season 19, and that will be coming out this month. Uh, we have a whole bunch of episodes to do for season 18, which I'm looking forward to. If you uh, want to get involved on season 18, I suggest you go to csjoseph.life forward slash typegrid and give us your email address so you can gain those lectures. The only way to get access to uh, the email lectures is to be on our email list. Uh, we may or may not decide to release them again in the future, just so you guys know. Um, but anyway, um, I think that's enough announcements for now. Uh, I'm here, I'm safe, I'm back. This is probably, shoot, the third or fourth time I've rebuilt my studio in the last year, which is really frustrating. But this time I'm using my optimal camera system, my optimal sound system. Um, hopefully I don't get too loud and too crazy. Uh, but again, uh, and, and better lighting, so I, I'm happy to be here, uh, complete with uh, painting and uh, painting. By the way, I like really like these kinds of paintings, so if you guys like have some canvas paintings that would really speak to me, I'd be happy to hang them on my wall for you. So anyway, on to the lecture. Cognitive transitions of ISTJs. So what are cognitive transitions? Uh, cognitive transitions is basically the process by which somebody moves from the ego, which is on here, uh, to uh, the subconscious, or the unconscious or the superego. The reason why is because people have four sides of their mind. Uh, and uh, this basically means we have four different people or four different personas uh, within our heads at all times, basically. And ISTJs are no exception. 
Uh, how to find out if you're an ISTJ, remember you gotta use the type grid and note that you are direct, you are responding, you are progression. Progression means you care more about the journey instead of the outcome. Whereas if you're outcome focused, you care more about planning as much as you can to uh, make one really good attempt and hit it. Whereas someone who's movement like an ISTJ, they're not gonna plan as much, they're just going to hit it. They're gonna do multiple attempts until they finally get it working. It's kind of more of a trial and error approach which is very ISTJ. Even though I know they are a J-type, however, please note they are a perceiving hero even though they are a J-type. So just be aware of that. That can actually cause some confusion with a lot of the MBTI uh, tests out there. And this is what lends to MBTI tests to be one out of five accurate. However, I will admit that if you have a licensed professional administering the MBTI test and they sit with you for an hour to two hours after you've taken the exam to make sure that you understand what you're getting into, that could probably increase to one out of seven hour, uh, you know, seven out of 10 accuracy instead of one out of five accuracy. So just, just be aware of that. Uh, that being said, uh, our test, I hope to have it released literally this month. Um, again, I would have had it released last month but given the COVID-19 drama, I needed to make sure that I was taking care of myself and that I was isolating and exiling myself. It's not that I'm living in fear. It's just that I have to be responsible um, because the, the condition uh, that impacted my liver negatively uh, has basically come back. Uh, it, uh, it is no longer in remission. So. Uh, and I started this channel because I was afraid that I was going to lose my liver, essentially. So I just wanted to upload my brain to the internet to have something to leave behind. Uh, but, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. At least I'm here now, so I'm going to do my best to push out as much content as I can, just in case. So, and don't worry about me. Uh, my wife is taking care of me, and I have various medical professionals and other experts who are administering treatment. And so far, I seem to be responding well to the treatment. So anyway, ISTJs. So ISTJs are known as the archivists. Their purpose in life is to be that walking library of Alexandria. Their, it's their job to like literally know everything. They pride themselves on learning as much as they can and also having with their ENF piece of conscious, the ability to have this insanely large Rolodex because they think that their self-worth or their FI child is actually based on how many social connections that they have with their TE parent because these two are linked. Now, a lot of people think that when I say social connections, I'm talking about extroverted feeling, and that's not necessarily the case. Uh, that is not the case at all. Um, and uh, the reason why is, is because they believe that the more quantity, because TE is all about quantity, whereas FE is more about quality, TE is, uh, so because of the quantity of people that they know, they actually feel themselves more valuable, basically, and that's where that comes from. So an ISTJ, uh, you know, their direct response movement, they're a finisher, they have a hard time starting things, but when they get onto something, they will finish it, they will see it through because they're all about seeing things through. Uh, they're also a guardian, uh, which is their disposition or temperament, according to, you know, David Kiersey, for example, or Stephen Montgomery, or Dr. Linda Behrens, et cetera. But temperament or disposition, as we call it here within the CSJ community, uh, they're very concrete, so they're really down to earth. You probably won't find anyone more earthy than like an SI hero, ISTJ, or ISFJ, let's be honest. There is also, um, um, they are also uh, affiliative, focused on doing the right thing, which can make ISTJs insanely authoritarian, which can be like really frustrating. I, I mean, Robert Mueller, I mean, that guy's an ISTJ. It's like, like, come on, you know, like extremely authoritarian, which is funny because given how authoritarian they are, their ESTP uh, shadow is actually very rebellious and anti-authority. So they're kind of like a walking mishmash uh, or walking conflict at all times and that conflict with themselves because sometimes for the sake of comfort, they're willing to adhere more so on the side of safety until they realize it is their duty to protect freedom of choice, their expert intuition inferior. And when they do that, then they end up penning and authoring things like civil disobedience, which I highly recommend you read that essay by uh, Henry David Thoreau. Henry David Thoreau is an ISTJ, and in my opinion, the most famous ISTJ. Uh, he's absolutely fantastic. Please read his books. 
please read Civil Disobedience, especially right now given the COVID-19 crisis and the potential risk that everyone around the world faces uh, in terms of governments taking advantage of the crisis to limit civil liberties of regular people like you and I, that would be a concern. Now, ISTJs, those people, when it comes to civil liberties, they're either the ones who are cracking the whip on people or they are the ones potentially uh, supporting or getting on their soapbox and basically starting the rebellion or, or, or preventing uh, the government and reducing the size of government and providing limited government for the sake of civil liberties, which I find absolutely fantastic. Um, because even then, you know, rationally speaking, an ISTJ would be aware of the fact that, hey, guess what? Uh, people have died for far less than what, uh, you know, the, the American people, for example, put up with today. Remember, the American colonies basically revolted over a 2% sales tax. Think about that for a second. You see what I'm saying? So I think a lot of people have been kind of lulled, uh, you know, uh, from that point of view to be able to, you know, make that distinction, etc. So anyway, cognitive transitions. Why are cognitive transitions important? They're important because people on the internet are always doing this thing where it's like, oh, you know, I, I'm an ISTJ today, but sometimes I'm an ISTP, or you know, I'm an ISTJ, you know, but sometimes I'm ESTP or they take their tests and they get different results because the test one out of five accurate, or they're constantly having this point of view where it's like, <coughs> you know, their letters can change. No, your letters cannot change. That's not how it works. If you want to learn more about that, watch my season 15 episode, the MBTI letter dichotomies debunked, where I basically prove that the lettering system of the MBTI is absolutely fundamentally flawed. The only reason I use it is for SEO. Otherwise, I'd completely abandon the lettering system entirely because there's really no reason to use it once you understand the type grid. But, uh, and you can get the type grid, uh, the older version of it at least, at csjoseph.life forward slash type grid. The new one was leaked publicly, by the way, and we will be making a release to the public uh, in the future, but not till after our test has made it. So hang in there, guys. We will be getting that to you for free. Don't worry about it. It is coming. Thank you for your patience. It is coming. We're just not ready to make that decision yet. We want to make sure we have a nice little foundation laid first before we get into that uh, direction. So um, the cognitive transitioning is where you actually can change your type, but only for like small periods of time, right? And the reason why is because you have like a bunch of energy, right? And these are like little four little fields with this total form, right? In different fields with different, different crops, etc. And uh, based on that, uh, you know, there's a lot of irrigation that goes into, you know, like moving water, for example, to get to different cognitive functions to be able to get them to work, right? Because if you don't have water in a crop, everything is going to die, right? So think of this as like some kind of psycho, uh, you know, like neural energy and cognitive functions are like neural pathways, right? Or different kinds of neural pathways. And this energy is, enters into uh, four different locations uh, through cognitive gateways, which are like irrigation channels or irrigation gateways, little doors that open up to let the water through to water the field, basically. And this is what happens with SI hero, NE inferior, SE nemesis, which is spelled wrong for some reason, uh, and uh, NI demon. Uh, so those are the four cognitive gateways, these things here. And you utilize these gateways to gain access to each of these different fields or these different sides of your mind, where you effectively, for a limited amount of time, could become a completely different person. This is why sometimes people make the argument like, well, you know, sometimes like I'm like this, but then sometimes I feel like this, and you know, but it's complete opposition. They almost sound like they're being a hypocrite. Well, guess what? Everybody's a hypocrite, including me. I'm not sure if you knew that, but it's true. Oh, you know, and by the way, I got my certifiable neck beard going on right now, you know, just kind of like how ISTJs would do because hashtag lazy for SI user, you know what I'm saying? No, just kidding. Um, not all ISTJs are lazy. Actually, some of them can be insanely studious and insanely uh, diligent, provided they have a cause with their ENFP subconscious, such as the cause that Henry David Thoreau had when he wrote Civil Disobedience. I want to keep track of that. Otherwise, ISFJs or ISTJs at least could be kind of they're kind of like the quintessential lazy person, if you think about it. They're the ones who often take time off work, probably more than anybody else, with INFPs probably being second place to an ISTJ taking off work. 
I, I wonder, I, I find it really, really interesting. And, and it's always funny to me when I hear about ISTJ women uh, complaining about, you know, how, because no one complains more than an ISTJ, let's be honest. No one complains better than an ISTJ. The reason why is because they're golden pair, the ESTP. The ESTP can't solve any problem or know what to do without someone complaining to them about it to begin with. That's why ISTJs are very good complainers. It's specific to help Templar types actually you know, value themselves by fixing the complaints of an ISTJ who then gives that Templar type gratitude in return. If you want to learn more about Templars and uh, philosopher types like ISTJs, I recommend you watch Season 17 playlist here on this YouTube channel. So anyway, um, uh, they get this, well, I'm just like all over the place today. Um, so maybe I have ADD or ADHD. Hmm, I wonder how many ISTJs actually like believe that because they kind of like believe in those arbitrary labels. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and it's not to say ADD and ADHD are arbitrary labels, but they are used arbitrarily. Trust me. Many people are misdiagnosed because their personality, you know, is the, the definition of their personality is also the definition of ADD. Like, how fair is that? You know, where we're literally saying how they're supposed to behave is abnormal. Yeah, that's not fair. That's not right. I thought ISTJs were about doing the right thing. You know what I'm saying? Maybe ISTJs should help people think better about those things with their inner library of Alexandria because aren't they supposed to know everything, right? To be able to make sure that people are thinking about things correctly so that none of that happens. That way they could be a guardian uh, to those innocent people, right? So you have your cognitive gateways and you can use your gateways in a chaotic manner or an orderly manner. And when you open up your gateway for the first time, there's a lot of water, a lot of pressure. That water just rushes in. It's very chaotic. It causes a lot of problems, right? And but or if you let the water in slow, controlled, very orderly, the water pours out through the irrigation channel, for example, in the inferior function to gain access to the subconscious uh, side of your mind in a very orderly manner and then it's able to fill up and then as a result people are able to use their subconscious sometimes you have a limited supply of water and usually people have it focused here in this field sometimes you could separate half of that water between this field and this field or maybe three quarters here or 25 percent here or maybe you could separate it out evenly amongst all the fields or have it concentrated down here or concentrated up here or completely spread out you have those options as you develop those neural pathways within your brain to use your cognitive gateways to gain access to the other sides of your mind and unlock those personas. And it's very necessary to unlock those personas because you gain better mental abilities and mental faculties that you did not have before. It's also a sign of maturity. It's a sign of cognitive integration because the four sides of the mind are actually disintegrated. And it also uh, causes uh, your ability to become smarter, more intelligent, more capable, more mature, uh, far more responsible, uh, humble, wiser, and ultimately reach a level of self-mastery that other people don't typically get within their entire lifetime. As long as human beings are aware that this works, they could utilize this to you know, solve this issue and become something far more and something far greater, right? So anyway, um, Cognitive gateways. Uh, so your first gateway, which is kind of get at birth, is introverted sensing hero. And introverted sensing hero is like uh, the ISTJ's awareness of duty, right? And uh, to use their hero in a chaotic manner, it causes the ISTJ to be very irresponsible. So they only make decisions based on what they experience and what they want to experience and how they feel, which can lend the ISTJ basically into an endless cycle of hedonism if they're not careful, as well as laziness and inaction. Um, as a result, the ISTJ is at risk of becoming an insanely huge burden on others, whether or not they're aware of it or not. This can also lead, especially in men, especially men in Western society, failure to launch syndrome. When the reality of the situation is they benefit the most just by like studying and keeping track of everything. The problem is, is that from a virtue and vice standpoint, if you don't understand virtue and vice, please watch season seven playlist. Uh, I think it's season seven, episode nine, where we talk about, um, you know, it's interesting how this is episode nine and in season seven it's episode nine hmm, might be a pattern uh but the point is is that uh istjs can their 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 virtue is gathering all this knowledge and all these facts but their vice is that they end up knowing trivial worthless facts that factoids that really don't mean anything uh, at all or actually have no use and so they end up collecting a, much, a lot of garbage as much as they collect valuable, useful uh, information as well within their internal library of Alexandria. 
So why is that? The reason why is because ISTJs are kind of predisposed to either be lazy or, um, or inactive or reactive instead of proactive. And because of that, they end up not going very far because they are irresponsible. Um, so what they want to do with their ISTJ ego, basically, is uh, learn that sense of responsibility to get there. Um, which we talk, we talk way more in depth about this in season 19. So anyway, the ISTJ ego, once one has access to it and then they start developing the other sides of their mind, the reason why they do this is because as you get older, your cognitive functions start forming. Remember, the hero function forms first, but it's the child function that forms second because those are the two optimistic functions. And then you have the inferior function that does third. Why? Because the inferior function is connected to the hero in an axis, and they're on an axis, they turn on one another, etc. And that axis gives the um, ISTJ, you know, the, the, the fear of being unwanted, basically. All ISTJs are afraid of being unwanted. They also don't like that they don't have very good status, and they figure by having more status or a higher reputation or higher regard or higher respect of other people, that would cause them to become more desirable because every ISTJ in the entire world wants so desperately to become more desired by the right kind of people and not necessarily just anyone per se but by the people that they would prefer to receive an experience from because they want to feel wanted and sometimes they don't feel wanted which can be a serious serious problem for them because they end up making decisions where they can end up through their fear of being unwanted they can end up becoming loyal to the wrong thing the wrong idea the wrong system or the wrong person kind of like an ISTJ school teacher that I'm technically um, technically um, related to who tried to explain to me that Common Core is the absolute best education system ever for children and could not be possibly better. Uh, there, there's no better system of education other than Common Core uh, within, uh, and there could never be a better one, uh, within the United States of America or basically within Western society as we know it. I think this is fundamentally ridiculous. But she was very stringent on her descriptions of it and the amount of loyalty and the, and the lengths from which she's willing to defend that uh, point of view. I just thought it was amazing because I realized at no point during any of the arguments she was making did she actually bother to verify any of that information. Also, uh, my pens uh, for the blackboard uh, really, really suck uh, a lot and it's really frustrating, honestly. Uh, so. So, you know, it's important, you know, you, you develop your, your, your ISDJ ego, you know, as a result, so you are far more responsible. And then as a result of that, you be, basically are become less ignorant because ignorance is the result of you focusing on the trivial instead of like the useful information, the useful data, which I kind of find interesting because INFJ superego sitting here and INFJ superego and INFJ is supposed to be the most useful of the types. So it's interesting when they're trying to fulfill out their life's purpose, they're going back and forth in terms of knowledge that they've collected with their TE parent. They're going back and forth between like, okay, knowledge that's absolutely worthless or knowledge that's absolutely useful because the INFJ archetype itself is the most worthless of all the types or it is the most useful of all the types. So it's kind of interesting to see the superego expressed within the ISTJ ego as a result. But ISTJs, they're, they're there to, uh, to be in the know about literally everything. They're there to soak up like, all this information like a sponge. Uh, they're there to have a moral standard with an introverted feeling child, and they are there to be wanted. They so desperately want to be wanted. And sometimes they get so afraid of being unwanted that they end up becoming loyal to the wrong person and fall into the wrong crowd. And then that can also cause the ISTJ to become very greedy. It can also cause them to become ungrateful and uh, they're willing to take more than they give. However, recently I did meet an ISTJ at an auto parts shop recently. Um, cool guy. Uh, and uh, he, he basically gave me something off the shelf because I was in a predicament and uh, left uh, my wallet at home. And it was very charitable of him. He did not have to do that. And I actually really like this community because it's extremely neighborly out here. Everyone out here is a good neighbor. Plus there's the social expectation of being a good neighbor. He understood that moral standard, the Zephi child, and he decided to help me. And then as a result of that, when this uh, you know quarantine or shelter in place order is over, I'm gonna go hand him my card and then I'm gonna go buy him a drink. 
you know, although I won't be drinking because my liver won't handle it, but I'm sure he'd enjoy that regardless. Um, fantastic fellow. Uh, and he was very charitable. And that's what happens when an ISTJ is not afraid of being unwanted. They become very charitable with the information, the knowledge, and the know-how that they have. This is why ISTJs, for example, are some of the best accountants. Uh, they're very good at being like a chief financial officer. I want an ISTJ to be a chief financial officer, for example. Um, they're, they're, they're very good with money, but they can be very, very greedy. And uh, so it's kind of like a toss up. Are they really, really that giving? It's because they're very grateful. Now, ISTJs, because they have SI Hero, they can actually lend themselves to being insanely bitter. And the more bitter they are, the less giving they are, which means the more greedy they become. So it's really, really important that you understand that ISTJs are very, very sensitive. And you do not want to allow them to get into a situation where they're being bitter or where they're not verifying their own beliefs. Because if they're not verifying their own beliefs, well, guess what? They're not really going to, I mean, they'll become the most ignorant of all the types and defend the most stupid the most stupid ideas that you've ever heard uh like like even even on a far worse level than conspiracy theories because at least conspiracy theories you know have to like not contradict and as my ESTP friend would say a conspiracy theory is a, a story without evidence or evidence without a story right whereas the ISTJ's job is to actually connect the both of them well, if they're being irresponsible, well, then you're going to find yourself in a situation where that's not the case. So when they cognitive transition to ENFP, they're, they're, the cognitive functions flip upside down. It's called inversing. Uh, look up inverse theory if you want to learn more about that. It's called inversing. And uh, when they inverse into their ENFP subconscious, this is the best part of them. They become very charitable when they're actually feeling wanted, when they're actually focused on making themselves desirable instead of trying to put one over on people because sometimes ISTJs can be very manipulative. Sometimes they'll change their loyalty like that and uh, they'll end up having conflicting loyalties. So when they're talking to one group of people, they're like, yeah, that other group of people sucks. And then they'll go talk to this other group of people and they're like, yeah, that group of people over there sucks. I've actually personally been the victim of that multiple times. I've actually had multiple relationships in my life and within this community been ripped away from me, uh, all because uh, an ISTJ or two were talking, uh, talking mad smack about me behind my back without ever having the guts to actually come to me to my face and criticize me to my face and give me the opportunity or the right to remedy the situation, probably because they never had faith in me to begin with. I have no idea, which is really sad to me that that happened. But I understand, you know, sometimes, you know, SI Hero, SI Hero is so afraid because they're really afraid of the consequences of actions because they're super hyper aware of the consequences of actions, which is why they're super hyper aware, aware of whether or not they're being wanted or desired other people. This can cause ISTJs to be really fake. And this is what happens when they get afraid with their ENFP subconscious because they end up being fake because they end up starting believing the ENFP adage, which is, you know, in the absence of communication or explanation, perceptions become reality. And they, but, but that could be a strength though, because they could see the perceptions, the fake perceptions that other people, especially politicians, uh, that they put up and they can easily be like, uh, uh, you're being fake. ISTJs are amazing fake detectors, especially with their ESTP shadow, just like ESTPs are also amazing fake detectors. If you're going to be in a negotiation with somebody and you're probably going to have millions and millions of dollars at stake or even more than that, or maybe you're going to be trading something far more valuable than money, I would recommend having an ISTJ and an ESTP with you present uh, when you make that decision because those two will absolutely guarantee that you're getting the best possible deal for yourself or that you're not going to get screwed. Uh, it's just it's just one of the huge advantages of ISTJs is that they themselves can be insanely good negotiators uh, provided they have that ESTP support because sometimes they can get to the metaphysical uh, unreal uh, world which is you know lends them at risk of potentially cooking the books whereas the ESTP holds them and provides the accountability to them to keep everything real while the ISTJ is effectively keeping you accountable because accountability and responsibility is the ISTJ. Out of all of the types, the one type that has the, that looks the most responsible is the ISTJ. The type that has the capacity of becoming the most responsible out of the types, it is the ISTJ. 
but they become really irresponsible when they're so afraid of being unwanted. So instead they just put up this perception and make them look desirable when the reality is they're literally just a paper uh, straw man instead of actually someone who has any real substance, which can be a serious problem with ISTJs. So, uh, but when they're in their ENFP subconscious, they become very charitable people, probably more than most people. Uh, and they also, uh, they also realize that when they're gathering all this information within themselves because of their library of Alexandria provided by their ego, they start to see a pattern within the information that they're coming in and they can expose conspiracies, uh, they can expose uh, collusion, they can expose unfair standards and unfair principles or principles that shouldn't even be principles, uh, they can expose dumb laws, they use their ESTP shadow to start exposing things and they let other people know with ENFPs. This is the reason why ISTJs are journalists, typically. Journalism is one of the most important jobs an ISTJ can actually do. However, given that if they could, they're so afraid of being wanted, an ISTJ is severely at risk of potentially writing or printing propaganda because they're afraid of not being wanted by their editor anymore. So be careful. And as much as an ISTJ and an INFP may accuse you of being biased, guess what? They're kind of the most biased of all the types, actually. They expect everybody else to have bias, but the Templar side of their mind, the ESTP shadow side of their mind, still comes with it, the aspect of hypocrisy. And this is one of the areas in which an ISTJ is very hypocritical. The reason why is, is because they worry so much about the experience or they worry so much about their own personal performance in the eyes of other people, like an editor, for example, that they will actually decide to not verify what the editor is saying or what there is writing about for the sake of making sure that they're performing or looking like they're performing well in front of their superiors uh, due to their loyalty factor, but also because they want to make sure that they are as desirable as possible and remain as desirable as possible because they're so afraid of being let go. They're so afraid of being unwanted. It also happens within sexual relationships as well, which is why ISTJ men oftentimes end up not being respected at all uh, by their golden pair type or even their silver pair types in women in terms of STPs. I don't know how many times I've heard STP women complain about STJ men on a consistent basis, uh, my wife included, she is an STP. Um, but before I met her, it was always that way as well. And one of the reasons why is because of this conflicting loyalty factor and because an ISTJ is willing to be a sellout. The best, uh, the best uh, example of ISTJ sellout uh, probably comes from the book Confessions of an Economic Hitman by uh, Perkins. I highly recommend that book, especially if you're an ISTJ. You can see like how bad it can get for an ISTJ compared to how good it can get for an ISTJ, uh, which is in Henry David Thoreau's Civil Disobedience. And Civil Disobedience really marks what an ENFP subconscious when an ISTJ gets over their fear and they're using an orderly transition, the water is going in through or orderly to water this field and build a crop, the crop of the ENFP subconscious. When they're in their ENFP aspirational mode, they're actually stronger than a regular ENFP, more charitable, more focused on the ideal of the situation, uh, trying to uh, able to pick up patterns that not even an ENFP ego would be able to detect with a particular subject or thing because the ISTJ can get so specialized in a certain area of knowledge. Uh, like for example, I know this one ISTJ who is an amazing political analyst uh, such that he even claims that he knows the identity of QAnon, for example, uh, and no, I'm not uh, a supporter of Q or anything like that. In fact, I don't even go on 4chan or 8chan, etc. I just know about Q and I maintain that Q is more than likely a council for national policy propaganda piece instead of like actually a person that cares and is probably manned by multiple people as you know as Neo would put it it's all just another level of control but hey don't take my word for it but the point is is that his level of analysis is so great especially in the political area that he can literally cite anything from like I don't know 20 plus years ago uh, to show people and expose their true agenda. And that's what's amazing about ENFP subconscious is its ability to expose 
people's agendas, their hidden agendas, so that his ISTJ ego can provide those people with additional accountability, all as a result of research. And it's absolutely amazing to see. Um, so, so props to my ISTJ friend, if you're watching this, uh, I am still impressed with your abilities to, uh, to this day, and I'm very thankful that you are my friend, um, even though sometimes you have admitted that you have conflicted loyalties, but that doesn't cause me to still uh, not think less of you. I actually do think very highly of you, sir. I just wish that you would feel the same way about me in certain circumstances. So, But that's for another day. He's still a good man, and I know that he tries. Um, so uh, with that being said, then you have the ESTP subconscious. Remember the ESTP is all about being rebel. And my brother-in-law, he's an ESTP focused ISTJ. Cognitive focus is when you start to favor or side of the mind based on the human nature. Remember, all human nature. Human nature is like a diagram of nature. You put it and you have a that versus we understand human nature. Some human nature. What happens with doesn't be an ISTA. Perhaps they're able to be more ESTPs from ESTPs, and your brain is going to adapt to that situation and allow you to think more in that direction, right? And that's what can happen all the time with ISTJs or anyone for that matter. And that's what cognitive focus is, right? So ISTJs in that situation, you know, they have their ESTP side, and like my brother-in-law, you know. He's very ESTP focused. One of the reasons why is because, uh, quite frankly, his father, uh, my my father-in-law, my father-in-law, his father-in-law is extremely critical with TI inferior. And let's be honest, an ENFJ uh, who is my father-in-law, ENFJs, their vice is cruelty, and he utilizes that vice of cruelty so much on his son. And but he's usually criticizing and being cruel to his son because his son ends up majoring in minor things or paying attention to the trivial uh, or or his father sees him as irresponsible due to the lack of achievement because his father sees his son as a hedonist a hedonist who uh, focuses on his own experiences and what his mood he only makes you know his, his dad is like you only make decisions based on your mood you only make decisions based on your experience right and that's not that's not really true per se. And then it just causes uh, his son to feel bad about himself because his father's like, you're not achieving anything. And the TE parent is all about achievement. And when it's in the parent section, it just causes his son to feel irresponsible all the time, such that his son ends up being disloyal to his father, abandons his father. But in the process of abandoning his father, he actually becomes his own man in the process and has his own car, his own job his own home all by himself with just a high school education and he's making more money than most people do whenever they graduate uh, college for example but his father still to this day gives him a ton of crap for never actually finishing a degree right even and would so it's an interesting dichotomy to watch but he's very ESTP focused to, in order for him to cope with the fact that his father had nothing to do there so as an ESTP He's having to be a little bit wiser. He's having to verify things that he knows because the reality situation is, is that while he understands that a degree may look good in the eyes of his father, he knows the truth, that a degree itself could actually be pretty arbitrary. And let me tell you something. It's very powerful to see an ISTJ who oftentimes rules entire social circles or, or even institutions through the power of arbitrary rules. It's all about creating arbitrary rules in an effort to control other people so that they can remain comfortable or so that they can remain wanted. The idea of being tenured at a job which makes you unfireable was literally created by ISTJs because it's like, hey, I put in my time here so and I've achieved X amount of time and I've put in my time here and I've been loyal to you, so you have no choice. You always have to want me. You could never fire me, for example. And it's because of expert intuition inferior. This is why the concept of tenure actually exists. And this is why ISTJs end up staying working at the same place for the longest time so that they can gain that tenure, so they can gain that pension, right? 
so they can have that retirement. It means everything to them. It's funny because they're also one of the more common and most of the types, and yet the American economy is heavily centered around the idea of retirement and social security and tenure, et cetera, which is a very traditionalistic point of view, and it's specifically because of extroverted, intuitive, inferior types, which just so happen to be the more common of all the types. SI inferior or SI hero types are, I'm sorry if I've been saying inferior, my bad, SI hero types are the most common of all the types. So it makes sense that their preferences kind of uh, dominate certain aspects of our culture, right? Especially since this is an SJ-focused society and they themselves are SJs. So my brother-in-law, he worries often about his performance all the time. So he's always trying to show everyone up all the time. Hey, look at me, look what I've done, which kind of makes him look bad sometimes, but I completely understand why he does it. Also, he's starting to treat people because of his, because he's shadow focused, his every trickster is developing a little bit because he's realizing that he needs to treat people like an investment portfolio. Hey, I'm gonna spend time with you. I'm gonna give you some of my loyalty, my SI hero loyalty as an investment so I can see if I'm gonna get a return on investment from having a relationship or a friendship with you. And as soon as he realizes he's getting less out of it than what he puts in, which is known as a curse, by the way, a curse equals getting less out of something than you put in. That's a curse. A blessing is when you get more out of something than what you put in. That's a huge return on investment. So he understands that he needs to be investing in those relationships where he's getting a return on investment, even though he has no clue how social dynamics work. But as long as he maintains that principle of treating relationships like an investment portfolio, he will always be socially acceptable and he will always be wanted by the right people and he will always make sure that he's putting his loyalty in the right place. And this also includes with ideas. Gentlemen, and ladies, when you're putting your loyalty into ideas or systems, because this type is systematic, they're focused on the best way to do something, not necessarily what they get out of the situation, they're more focused on what the best way to do something. Because they're so systematic, if you put your faith in a system or ideas, is it really paying off for you? Is it really actually helping you? Or are you actually causing yourself more damage than not? And this is one of the reasons why I think ISTJs typically don't go to church because they kind of end up having that realization that a church system is not actually very beneficial to someone as rational as they are, right? And this is why ISTJs end up becoming the biggest proponents of, for example, the theory of revolution, as well as creationism, actually. Uh, my friend Eric Pogel, he's an ISTJ. He runs uh, the creationism and the evolution subreddits on Reddit and uh, can easily argue both sides. It's absolutely fantastic. And he's an example of him using his library of Alexandra of all the knowledge that he's gained within his life to be able to provide uh, the ability so specialized that he can argue both sides. He can take both sides and get people thinking about these ideas properly so they can get absolutely I don't know that I'm not getting paid to said that, but hey, Eric Pogel's cool, so I figured I'd say something. Um, but anyway, ESTPs. Um, so, uh, so, so when they're in their ESTP mode, you know, they worry about their performance. Sometimes they overcompensate with their performance. But here's one thing, you know, ISTJs they have a tendency of being absolutely lazy um, or ignorant. They really need to learn that it is wise to verify all of their beliefs because TE Parent is all about belief. And if they're not verifying their beliefs, they have a risk of putting their loyalty into fake things, fake perceptions. Because remember, in the absence of communication or explanation, perceptions can, can become a reality. Uh, and that's the problem because this is why ICJs can detect people just putting up a facade or a persona or... or um, um, you know, or being fake because they'll look for those contradictions consistently because their ESTP shadow forces them to look for those contradictions because they know it's wise. They have to verify what other people have said because they themselves have become so burned by putting their faith in the wrong people and the wrong ideas 
even in their own mood, so many times in their life that they end up having incorrect belief systems and it's bit them in the butt so many times. They remember with their SI hero every time that's bitten them in the butt. So they end up realizing that it's wise for them to verify all those things with additional research, bouncing ideas off of other people, and verify, 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 verify. Now, one thing with ISTJs, though, if they feel unwanted, then they're just going to do whatever they want. And trust me, you don't want an ISTJ doing what they want because then it becomes even far worse level of hedonism than you've ever seen. ISTJs, like, um, you know, I know that, like, for example, SFPs, especially ISFPs, have a really bad time at gambling. But if you want to know people that are all about snorting cook, uh, uh, snorting coke off of uh, a hooker's ass, it's definitely NI Demon. Uh, NI Demon uh, is willing to go that far. Uh, because it's like, well, why am I even loyal to this situation if I'm not even wanting here? You know, fine. I'm just going to do what I want because what you want, you obviously don't want me. So I'm just going to do what I want. And it becomes this insane quest for self-aggrandizement such that, you know, hey, if I'm not wanted by this woman, I'm going to go pay a woman. You see what I'm saying? It's a serious, serious problem. It's like the, the worst form of hedonism as a result of their INFJ demon coming out. And that's what happens here for this uh, cognitive gateway when they transition into their superego and they become very demonic. You know, uh, they can actually turn this into an angelic function because a person's hatred exists within their demon, but their person's love also exists within their demon where the ISTJ can realize that something is bad and they will sacrifice themselves similar as to how Jesus Christ sacrificed himself, right, on the cross, for example. Um, this is where you get amazing whistleblowers, ISTJ whistleblowers. And what is the best example of an ISTJ whistleblower in today's day and age? It's Edward Snowden. Edward Snowden is an ISTJ. He's an ISTJ who's using his superego in an angelic way by whistleblowing and sacrificing himself and taking on all the risk on his SI hero doing his duty and no longer be being wanted by anyone because he is exposing people's dark agendas against everyone else. And he, like Henry David Thoreau, for example, are performing civil disobedience for the benefits of other people and sacrificing themselves for the sake of their ideals and for the benefit of others. It's absolutely astounding. Those men should be revered because they had the courage to do that when typically ISTJs are some of the most afraid people of us all and lack courage. But when they have courage, the courage of their NI angel bringing out their INFJ angelic side, it's absolutely exquisite when their cognitive transitioning becoming this INFJ approach. So just understand that these are the differences. They need to make sure that they're verifying uh, with their ESTP subconscious or uh, unconscious, etc. But yeah, um, so it really comes down to you know um, a person's responsibility, irresponsibility uh, with this gateway, a person's uh, fear versus faith in themselves with this gateway, which is the NE inferior function. The nemesis is where they're worry versus they're certain. The ISTJ becoming certain in their performance instead of being worried about their performance, and then also. Uh, trading their hatred for love, right? And love for their fellow man. As a result of conquering these gateways, they'll be able to healthfully transition to the other side of their mind. But regardless, either way, they can go into either side of their mind with a fearful approach, right? Or a faithful approach, right? A responsible approach or an irresponsible approach, right? Or for the shadow, right? A foolish approach or a wise approach. Or, for example, a certain approach versus a worried approach. Or a hateful approach with their superego versus a loving approach with their superego. And that's literally the cognitive transitions of ISTJs. If you found this lecture useful, helpful, educational, enlightening, please subscribe to the channel here uh, on YouTube. Maybe also on the podcast as well. Uh, if you have any questions about ISTJs, please leave in the comments below. I go out of my way to um, read every single comment, like literally every single one of them. Uh, I may not always reply. Uh, you know that your comment has been read if I put a little heart on it. 
because that's basically me marking them as red, essentially. Uh, so that's, that's always me, and no one else is doing it. I am doing it, um, and I read everything, guys. Um, also, if you'd like to uh, get, uh, get in on the opportunity uh, for uh, potentially checking out the final episode of Season 19, go to csjoseph.life forward slash Patreon and check out Gold Tier. Uh, the cognitive development for INFPs is released uh, in that lecture for Season 19. So, anywho, guys, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys tonight.